Good day, my lovely people. Welcome here again to my channel, Eleanor's Chronicles, and my name is Eleanor. My lovely people, I want to tell you a story time about a time when I was nearly human trafficked by my own family. Sold out for the beer. Bauri said for the beer. Imagine. That time, I ain't even drinking alcohol. Hmm? I ain't even taking a small sip. Of the nonsense that they're drinking yet they're sending me out my melon um you know i think i already explained uh in the story time that i did about us and our senzo mewa so i had gone out with the very same cousins uh being kidibone farmer and um, the only person, instead of our Senzo Meiwa in this story, we had um, another Kiribone who was Louis's baby mama at that time. Uh, so the story goes like this. We had gone to the very same pub, the pub that I said that I always felt safe at, which is Oscar Batch's uh, pub. And like I did explain in the other, if you haven't seen it, uh, please do check it out as well. Um, I had explained over there that I felt safe at Oscar Batch's pub basically because um, Oscar Patch himself will keep on looking out of the VIP and check that we are not misbehaving in the corner that we are seated at. Like, if we were not allowed to sit somewhere where he cannot have a vantage point when he comes out of the VIP section, and we were not allowed in the VIP section because and then he did not want us next to that actually not us but me specifically because of uh the treaty that was between him and my foster mom and i was only allowed to drink boiling water when i was there because anyway his barman knew, knew that I only loved boiling water, much as it's a club and everybody's going crazy. I still got boiling water in a flipping club. Okay, my lovely people. So we were there and we had fun by our crazy selves. Then comes time to leave, and mind you. We went to the club. This is the setup. Always when I go out with my cousins, they don't have Jack. They don't have even one penny to their names. We don't have a ride. We are going to walk to the club. We are going to walk back from the club. And they are going to drink to their fill. They are going to be drunk, sometimes not even know their own names. Yet, we did not even have money for even one savanna. How they got drunk, I got no idea. I was never interested. I was never about that. So, I never cared. I never cared. I knew that everybody, when we get there, all sorts of men start buying alcohol. Why they're doing it? I don't care. Why? Because I'm the geek in the room, the geek nobody talks to. So what the cool kids do, not my endeavor. I should just count my blessings that at least the cool kids are letting me hang with them so uh it comes on that particular day uh time for us to leave so when we are 
when when we are about to step out uh kenny majosi was stepping in they call him mr Haynes. he was stepping in and he greets me i greet him and he says you're going home i say yes and he says are you working and i say yes and he says i don't like what you guys are doing and i'm like now nah, we are cool we're gonna get there then he goes to the bar to talk to the other kenny remember the bar there's kenny as well the kenny who always makes sure that when i enter the club he gets the kettle to boil some water for me yes uh so he goes over to uh to kenny and he starts complaining to kenny that i don't like what these ones and kenny is also like saying you know what i don't even know what this one is doing here because all she does is like create chaos with this boiling water of hers and i start to ignore them and follow my cousins because they were now a few steps ahead of me as i was busy chit chatting with the two kennies little did i know that we had eyes on us so we left uh oscar Peche's pub we go around the corner as we are going a few steps in just before we get to Simulo, a red bmw the 325s little bit of quiet or something like that is following us and it stops right next to us and they say to kiri uh where are you going thought we had a deal and kiribon is like saying no wait i mean we are still talking to her so and they're saying you're talking to her so far from the pub so i don't mind the conversation i just continue with the road because uh, as this guy stopped and started chit chatting, Louis and Farmer did not stop. So I just followed uh, Louis. And one of the guys uh, gets out of the car. And I hear Louis's baby mama being the other Kiriboni saying, No, why are you doing this? Uh, wait, let us talk to her first so now i get worried because i knew that when that car opened i had a distinct sound i look at lewis and lewis seems not to be paying attention and i'm like i know i ain't i did not hear things i did not hear no wind i know i had a sound of a gun you know when a gun makes this sound that goes like clicking you can't mistake that especially not 1 a.m in the morning you, you can hear that sound like even from a block off believe you me not the sound of a gun shooting but that sound of somebody going like off of the pin going like just clicking you will hear that pin you know so that made me look at the bag now i see that this guy is like aggro but then i scan him i don't see the gun and i see that now the girls are panicked and i don't understand what's this conversation and why is louis not caring so i end up saying louis what's up with this ones and louis says you girls you drink the whole night and now i'm supposed to care what goes on uh -uh, i'm going home and i'm like what are you talking about so now this back and forth between the guys in the car and the two kiddies continue and since me and louis are now a few steps ahead like there's a bit of a distance between the girls and us 
Now the car starts to move from there to, to me and Louis. That makes uh, the baby mama to run to us. To, and when he gets to us, he says, no, guys, wait, let's talk. By that time, me and Louis are already by Timolo at the police station and we are turning. You know, by that time now, it's becoming clear that now nah, something is wrong. And same as in the other video, instead of heading into the police station, we continue with the road. We, we ignore <laughs> the police station. We ignore the clinic. And believe me, the clinic closes at 6, but there's usually people for uh, emergency at night. So if we scream at the gate, the security will be there to call for help in case maybe uh, it becomes uh, a hassle for us to get inside the police station. The security guards will be able to call the police for backup because it's like right here on their gate. But then we did not do that. And by that time, it... We, we can see that something here, much as Mina, I do not understand. And at that time, I thought that me and Louis are both village idiots, that something is going on and we both do not know. Little did I know that I was the only village idiot. Next thing, by the time the car uh, parks next to us, now we have already passed Simulo. And um, we have passed the Olifant House. We are almost at some church called AME, uh, just about to get to D3. I look back, I notice that I don't see Kiriboni and Farmer. They are nowhere. They've disappeared. They are nowhere. There's no, the only kid one who's there is Louis's baby mama. So, as now I'm starting to now to pay attention properly between the conversation between the baby mama and these guys. Uguti, okay, now clearly there's a fight. Now I start gearing myself up. The lion in me is starting to wake up now. I'm start to I'm I'm only now starting to get up for a fight that uh uh there's danger here. I don't know how as we are there, I am looking straight at Lewis. Lewis disappears. I don't know how. I did not see him run. I did not see him uh step to the side. He just disappears in front of my eyes. Now, the only people who are left there, it's me, it's Lewis's baby mama, and these guys. And inside that BMW, there were about five guys. Because it was three seated at the back. Uh, or it was two, I don't remember. It was two seated at the back, and it was two seated at the front. Then, now... The guys come now, they cut us off. When they cut us off, I look at Kiriboni and I say, I have no idea what's your beef with these guys. But believe you me, we no longer have time. Whatever negotiations you were doing with them, we no longer have jump the fence. So we were standing where we were standing it's like on the street it's a street then there was this house it's got a long vineyard like you know they do in mommy Lodi, they used to do verandas with um with a grapevine and this house was a four-roomed house it was cream white and it had um a long veranda covering from the gate all the way to the back rooms of uh, a grapevine. 
and I was like, jump this gate into this house. And she was like, but then it, we don't know the people in that house. And I was like, look here, if you want to be alive, jump the gate and she was like what about you and i was like don't worry about me i'm gonna be fine me they won't touch but then you i have no idea so she, kiriboni quickly i help her she jumps the gate because the gate was quite long i help her quickly and she jumped everything happens like a second then it was like in a split second i've already made kitty jump the gate now i'm turning i'm looking at the guy now i can clearly see the gun the gun is in this guy's uh hand and he's coming towards me and he's swearing he's like get in the car i don't want to fight with you i don't have time for uh a beer wah, 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 wah. and i'm like get in whose car and who the fuck are you for me to get into your car because i ain't going nowhere i don't know you and was like you are gonna get into this car and i was like make me i wanna see that time now i'm he's got a gun i'm picking up bricks <laughs> that's how that's how crazy i am if <laughs> i was crazy he's got a gun i'm picking up bricks he's like you're gonna get i'm like come make me I want to see you make me get into that car. Then, as we are busy with the back and forth, and we are now face to face, there's a car that's approaching us, and that car comes and speeds, and also cuts, cuts off right in front of this BM, and it stops, and a guy jumps out of that. Yo, when I saw who got out of that car, I broke down and I cried. I was no longer a... I just cried because it was Kenny Majosi, uh, Mr. Haynes. And you know what? I was like, my bro is here. He's gonna sort your ass out. <laughs> then when Kenny got there, he was like, you know he just got there and he looked at the guy and he kept quiet he looked at the gun he looked at the guy he looked at me and he was like what's going on here and i was like i don't know and he was like you're here standing with a man 2 a.m in the morning and you don't know what's going on i'm gonna ask you again what's going on here and i was like i don't know and Kenny looked at this guy and he was like, uh, bruh, what's, who are you? And this guy was like, yeah, this girl, we bought her alcohol and now she does not want to go with us. Yeah, this and that and that. And Kenny was like, oh, I'm Kenny apart. I said, who are you? And this guy was like, nah i'm so and so and so and he was like where are you from this guy was like so it and he was like so you drove all the way from so it to come here to terrorize my girl he was like no this girl he drank our alcohol you must know that you know uh kenny had his own street cred so clearly these guys knew, knew him much as i don't know them he knows them they know him and uh they've got mutual respect uh, mutual respect much as they don't really maybe know each other that way but then you know most this guys in the streets i really don't understand how guys vibe in the streets so uh these guys were like no th this girl our alcohol and whatever nonsense that I could not even understand till to this day. I, I can't tell you what for what that guy said because it was a whole lot of gibberish. Because I, I had no idea what he was talking about. So the only thing I remember word for word, I remember when Kenny said, this is my girl. I know for a fact she does not drink alcohol. But then... If 
she drank your alcohol and you're saying to me that she's standing here like this as sober as i'm seeing her yet you bought her a 348 of whatever's then i agree with you she must pay for that so let's do this smell her if she smells even a hint of alcohol of any type then you're gonna do your jagaraza with her right here i'll wait once you're done and you're satisfied that you got your 348 worth of chakra, you give me my girl back. And I vamos. Deal? Guy says deal. And he says, can you says come here? And I'm like, I ain't playing. What the fuck? I, I, what did you say? Kenny's like, I ain't playing with you. Come here. Then I go over to Kenny's side and he, he was like, breathe. And I go like, ah. And he's like, I don't, I don't smell alcohol. I smell tobacco though. Because I know my baby smokes tobacco like a camel. She smells like a chimney that she also always smells like. Definitely, I don't smell alcohol. Please, you smell. The guy came and he smelled me and Kenny was like, can you smell alcohol? He was like, no. He called the other guys in the car. He was like, guys, come, smell. Guy number two said no. Nah. Guy number three said no. Nah. Guy number... Now I'm standing there with, with like five guys. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. And Kenny was like, guys, what you're doing is so not right. Even if she actually drank your alcohol, she did not go into your pockets and make you release that money. So immediately when you saw that your deal is going south, you should have just abandoned that. I am disappointed in you guys. I thought you're better than this. And those guys were like, nah, you know what? This this girl, she must just be careful. The people she's hanging out with are not all right. And Jabara and Kim was like, the big girl, let's get in my car. Let me take you home. See what I was telling you. See, I, I was just Nuku Kala just now. Horin Twe Yaluna e a horil digire maro don jedi to eba fela. Maho kuba tubaru vizelena you you'll be gallivanting in the streets. You see you see, if Kenny did not tell me that someone followed you, you will be in so it now. Were you gonna return a life? Immediately when I stepped in the car, now in the car there's supposed to be me, there's supposed to be Gidiboni, uh, Louis's baby mama. All of a sudden, uh, I see Louis and Farmer are kneeling behind two houses down. There's an elephant ear, they are kneeling behind that elephant ear. They come out of that, uh, from their hiding spot behind that elephant ear flower and they come running. Now, Kenny is standing outside his car like... So there was two guys here, but I found only one girl fighting off four guys. Okay. Then... Uh, he takes us, we, we drive, uh, just before we get home on the way, we see Kiribone and he stops, picks up Kiribone and he looks at me because I was seated at front with him on the passenger seat in the front. He looks at me. Then we get to my place, we all get off, and he says, well, now you don't get off. 
guys chop but <laughs> then i remained behind with him and he was like one day you're gonna see one might one day you won't be, you won't believe to tell the thing one day you will not live to tell the tale do you actually understand what just happened here do you understand what these scoundrels did to you just now and i was like no nah, it was not like that ah. and he was like I thought you were wiser than that, but then anyway, see ya. And because, you know, Kenny tends to sometimes, especially when he's annoyed, maybe scream a little bit, you know, because he's got to bring that big brother thing out, you know. So I guess when he was talking, he was a bit loud. So my Rakhadi had to step out and go like, hey. And what not? And Louis was like, Rakat, you know what happened? And that time, when I saw my Rakat, I started crying again. I started crying again. And Louis is there trying to explain it to Rakati. We, we left here, we did not even have. Uh, you saw us. We did not even have five friends. Yet when we got there, uh, I saw them. There was 48 under the house. Then there was another 48. Then there was another 48. The next thing, there's guys with guns and they say, I must fight. Now I was not going to fight. Now I left her there. And Rakati was like, what the hell are you talking about? And I was crying. Marakati had to do sugar water. Had to do is kambelele because i was livid and marakadi was like i always tell you how many ala oya kai usala murao matahu usala biang matahu hebo anaba anwa wena wira and i was like i was there to keep the bonus safe I had to make sure Kiriboni is safe. But then Bona, they drank, they told guys to buy them alcohol and told the guys that the alcohol was mine. That's what pissed off those guys. Because as far as they were concerned, they were buying me alcohol. And me, I asked for the alcohol. And me, I said I had the odds for the guy with the gun. Hmm? And me, I said I'm gonna go with them. To so wait, to engen I bona pi so wait to me. Yeah, of all places, we no sugar and jan provoked and go to so wait. Two a.m. in the morning. Hmm. Right in the midst of iso iso, me na just go to so wait. That's the story, guys. That's the story, guys. Um, it's gonna make sense right now when I'm telling you uh, what's going on between with the beef of um, Mpo Zila sisters and uh, Inomorolo because one of the sisters relays a story that is similar to this and it is so heartbreaking much as she's telling it like she's seated in some club the story that she told as to why uh, she finds uh in a vow is very heartbreaking and unfortunately their story does not have a good good ending <laughs>